<laughs> so, so tell me about how, um, like, like you mentioned a couple times, you know, that you've got a democratic process and you've got some some things around conflict resolution. Um, tell me how that's structured. Like, what are the what are the ways that that, like, particularly democracy, democratic process, um, but and also, I mean, if you have sort of more formal aspects of the conflict resolution, uh, what do those look like? Um, I suppose the main thing about Karambina is that we're non-hierarchical. So we all have one voice, we all have one say, one vote. That's me, I suppose, as the educational coordinator. We do not have a principal or a headmaster. I, we have um, executive team, admin team, we have the teachers, we have the children and we have the family and the community at large. We also, I guess, are governed by our school council, mm -hmm. which is made up of parents and teachers and staff. But no one makes decisions by themselves. So it's all a collective decision. And it's as democracy is, it can be long and arduous and messy just to make sure that you have everybody's opinions and voices heard so that it's, you know, as democratic as we can get it. I think too, uh, yeah. One, yeah, one of the other things, Don, is that so as... Olivia mentioned we have we have a school council um, from from there they're the governing body of the school mm -hmm. but the the children and the teachers on a day-to-day -day basis we also have lots of meetings as well so we have every once a week we have a whole school meeting that includes preschool we all gather together and the children take charge of that so they take turns in chairing the meeting and having the opportunity to bring topics to the meeting that are discussed you know lots of um, there can be a variety of different topics from children wanting to set up a stall to raise money for a charity or reminders about climbing trees how to treat each other nicely you know when we had chickens how we how we treat the chickens all those sorts of things and then from there each individual class have their own class meetings once a week as well nice. so t topics that are more you know focused on the individual class would, would come up and you know you might have a conversation and dialogue about you know what do we want our class environment to look like how do we want to be behaving within our classroom space and and so that you're engaging the children in in the in the in the process of so this is what we've decided as, a, you know, as a small community in the class, as a wider community within the whole school, and then the community that 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 includes, you know, the families. So we invite yeah. the families in a lot to to come and have a say, to get their voices heard. I suppose you could say we, and then that comes, I suppose, along with democracy, is that rights and responsibilities. So we really encourage them to come and be a part of the school to share with us their expertise on their own children, be part of that decision-making process as well, but also be responsible for things around the school, such as the maintenance, helping, you know, volunteering time. So we're really trying to engage all parts of the community so that we're all feeling heard and we belong mm -hmm. and that we're part of the decision-making process. So none of us make decisions alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, the teachers and the, and the, I guess, the executive staff, we all collaborate and come up with a plan together. This is the Agentic Schools podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world, where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.